your organization. For those of us who are network administrators in our various organizations or system administrators or server administrators, uh, you might find this course more engaging, more practicalizing. Uh, for those of us also who have a passion or interest in moving further in network security or cyber security, this topic is also very, very fundamental to you. So uh, this particular topic that we're going to do, we're going to understand some different techniques that we're going to use in order to be able to help uh, prevent uh, hackers from getting into our network or into our organization. Now, firewall hides. In the previous class, we understood the concept of firewall. And we said a firewall is basically a wall or a partition that is actually designed to, uh, to prevent fire from spreading from one part of the building to another. And most cases, they use uh, these red bricks. They use this type of red bricks because uh, fire does not uh, go through it. And that is why it is called firewall. But in the aspect of computer, we actually use it to design or control uh, the flow of data or the flow of information or, actual, or actually filter communication between two different worlds or between two different ends. And so a, a, a firewall here in our own case, as you can see in the diagram, is you have a particular server in this particular location that is providing services. And then you have some particular clients in this segment that are trying to establish connectivity uh, to the particular server. So the concept of the firewall is actually to say what kind of are just basically the rules or policies or instructions we set that defines what kind of traffic we allow from the host end to enter and meet the server or what kind of services we allow the server to, to, to provide access to. Or sometimes you also discuss what kind of, um, what kind of devices are being permitted to move over um, to access the server or thereabout. So basically it is like a security uh, wall where policies are being implemented, like a boundary. So you have to meet a particular criteria in order for you to be permitted in or out. So like over the years, as computer network attacks have become very much more sophisticated, we keep having new types of firewall that are being developed so that they can meet up with these different types of um, uh, attacks that are trying to uh, get into the network. So we have some few types of firewall that I want us to look at. The first one is called the network firewall. The network firewall. Now, the network firewall is actually uh, designed to filter uh, in filtering based on source and destination IP addresses. You might ask the question, what is an IP address? An IP address is just a unique uh, identifier that identifies any device on a network, okay? Uh, it's like a name you give somebody, but not just a name, like a number, like a star file number or a mat student matric number or, uh, or a particular number. If your, your driver's, driver license uh, number or your, your national identity card number, they are unique number, your BVN number. All those numbers are unique numbers because you cannot have more than one person having a particular number. So the same rule applies for any device that wants to connect to a network. So that device needs to have that unique number and it's, um, it's called an IP address. IP stands for Internet Protocol, all right? So it's a rule that is actually designed to help enhance the communication between um, devices on the network. So there are firewalls that we set on what we call the network layer firewall. All right, that governs that. We also have what we call the transport layer firewall. Now, this transport layer firewall is filtering based on source and destination ports. Okay, 
Now, um, before I go a little deeper, let me just digress a little to give you a background. Every every um, uh, network has what we call, uh, uh, works with what we call the OSI model. It's just um, a reference model that has been designed to, to, to govern the communication uh, over the network. Now, this particular type of design or this particular type of um, uh, 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 model is actually uh, there to help us understand what happens at each layer when a traffic moves from one device to the other. Now, amongst these layers, the area of concern here we have, one of it is called the network layer. Another of the layer is called the transport layer. Then another layer is called the application layer. Now, these are the layers we have in the OSI model layer. All right? Now, here, why are, why are we looking at these particular three layers in these firewall types? Why are we looking at them? Because the network layer actually governs how your routing activities take place. If your traffic is leaving your computer and going to maybe Google or going to Yahoo, or it's going to a very a, a different destination. At this particular layer, this is where the traffic is being, how the traffic moves is being determined. If the traffic is supposed to take left, this is where it is being told to take left. If it is this layer determines the shortest, safest, and reliable path for your traffic to move around. Now, and it is being managed basically by the IP addresses that you have. The next layer is the transport layer that we're looking at. The transport layer firewall, like we said, is based on source and destination ports. You see, in the network layer, we have source and destination IP addresses. So that means this particular system, for it to access this server, this system must have an IP address. This server must have an IP address. But at the transport layer, it's telling us source and destination port. Now, the port has to do with the services that are being offered on that particular network. It might be mail services. It might be IP addressing services called the HTTP. It might be DNS services. It might be um, FTP services. Maybe when you want to download a file or when you want to transfer a file. With all those ones are services. So there is a particular firewall services that control this particular kind of service, and that's the transport layer service. And it does that based on the path, the ports. The ports are like the window or the doors that this is your traffic have to follow in order to get to its destination. Now, the next firewall type is the application layer firewall. The application is basically the software that we install on this particular system. So as we install the software on this particular system, they are called applications. So there is a rule, like I showed you um, in the last class, that I am using Norton. I can put in a filter to determine what kind of application is allowed to run on the network or to run on my machine or not. So that is the firewall rule that you can set on application. Okay. Now we also have what we call the context our application firewall. Now this filtering based on the user or uh, the device or basically the role the application actually uh, 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 plays. Okay. So if um, I am setting up this particular firewall, I am trying to um, customize the rule that I am placing on the application. All right. I am customizing the rule on the application or on the particular device or on a particular role. I can say anybody who has this kind of permission should be allowed to access a particular kind of service. So if in my organization we have different hierarchies of staff, we have maybe the network staff, we have the um, management staff, we have technical staff, we have different kind of staff. Now, based on those particular categories or groups, you can decide to create firewall. Remember, the firewall is just 
how you can uh, prevent or grant access to a particular uh, resource. Then we also have what we call the proxy server. And that's also a particular type of firewall. So this particular proxy server is filtering of web content, like URL, like when you put your www.this.this. So I can use the proxy server if in my organization, I want to filter people from accessing pornography, for instance. And I know there's a lot of vulnerability in pornography. So I come to a proxy firewall and create that rule. I want to access, uh, 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 deny people during the working hours from accessing football. For instance, during working hours, I can come to the proxy server to, to apply that. And so, and what I am applying is based on the website. So I will say, do not access this website within the hours of this and this. Do not access this website, or we could say, only permit this particular website to access a particular content or a particular uh, service. So the idea of a particular con um, uh, proxy server is just to help uh, filter the web content. All right. Then we also have another one called the reverse proxy server. Now, this is usually placed in front of a web server. Reverse proxy servers protect, hide, offload, and distribute access to web servers okay so because you want to protect that particular web server the web server is just the machine that houses your website okay the machine that houses your website the website is where people visit all right they put www.unijos.edu.com that is the web address of the university of Georgia. so when you type it then it takes you to the web server of the university where you will see the different web pages okay so the reverse proxy server actually is placed in front of the web servers um, to hide users from accessing or hitting the web server directly so if you want to access the web server using an ip address for instance you might not even know the ip address the real ip address of the web server what you will be hitting is probably the proxy server or the reverse proxy server. Then you also have another firewall called the NAT firewall or rather the network address translation firewall. Now this hides or masquerades the private IP addresses of network hosts. Now, what are we saying? We agree that every end device, all these end devices, are identified using an IP address. And so the IP address actually is a number, a unique number that they need to have on the network. So now we have different types of number. We have what we call the private numbers and or IPs, and then we have what we call the public IPs or the global IPs. Now the global IPs are, are what you see on that are routable over the internet you can use them to access the internet and things like that but the private ip addresses are not routable over the internet meaning that you cannot use them to access the internet so sometimes when you have an isp that grants you access to internet services what they do is that at the particular firewall they do what we call NAT, network address translation they will take your particular ip address and translate it that means they will change it to the public ip address that they have that you will go out with so the aspect of network address translation is also another kind of security or firewall that protects the local or the private ip addresses that you have then you also have the host based firewall A filtering of ports and system services calls on uh, on a single computer operating uh, system. So every computer, like my system here now, is a host system. Every camera, every device that is used to access the network is called a host or is called a, an end device, okay? Or the server, the server can also be a host or an end device. So we are saying that even the machine itself, locally, you need to be able to have the 
uh, the services that uh, 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 you need to be able to have firewall that pre prevents or protects that particular machine from uh, 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 intruders. Okay. So for our first activity, it's going to be like the first eight. Since you have written numbers one four, on your papers, so today we are going to do, do it. And I intend to see your results by the end of the class. I want to see those who get um, 34 over 34. So we are saying we have um, this particular activity, numbers one to eight. So I'm going to just read and then you will now type uh, 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 write in the answers. And then we will check the answers together. So, number one, these are the answers. What kind of firewall hides or masquerade the private IP addresses of network hosts? Okay, what type of what type of firewall masquerades or hides or translates uh, your IP address from not, private not. to local? So, just put the answer not. in number one. Okay. Number two says, what kind of firewall filters the web content request? Okay, web content like your URL, like your website. Okay, you want to access a particular, so what kind of uh, uh, firewall actually describe, uh, prevents, uh, gives you policies to access certain websites? Okay, you put the answer in number two. Number three, what kind of firewall Filtering of ports and system ports on the operating system. Okay. Sorry, uh, Mushaizam, Ibrahim, please, can you, uh, Mike, Ibrahim, Mushaizam, thank you very much. So, uh, what kind of, what kind of, um, firewall, uh, uh, uh does filtering of ports on a system, okay, give you operating system like your machine or something like that. You put the answer. Then the next one. What kind of firewall does filtering based on the user device or all uh, and then or threat? Okay, so look at it and then uh, you let us know the the answer. Okay. Now, the next one is uh, what kind of uh, firewall is placed in front of a web server to protect or to hide or to offload the distance across uh, uh, the, the networks. All right, so you think about that. This particular describes the kind of firewall that you place in front of your web server so to protect uh, users from attacking it. So the next one is what kind of firewall does filtering based on a program or service? Okay, that is it filters the program or the application or the service that you are particular uh, rendering. Okay, then the last one, what kind of firewall does filtering based on source and destination IP address? Looks at the source and then the destination. And so I'm sure. You just write your answers now. Uh, uh, by now, I'm sure you have all. <clears throat> I'm sure you have all written your answers. So let's quickly go through it so that we can be able to cover so much. So number one, uh, what kind of um, uh, firewall hides or masquerades the private address of network? Uh, I think that one is not network address translation. Uh, we'll find out later. The next one, uh, what kind of firewall filters content? Okay, so um, I think it's a proxy server that filters. I want to filter uh, pornography. I want to filter football. I, can't, I want to filter a particular website. Then I use that kind of firewall. And then what kind of um, firewall does port and system service calls on a single computer? That one is basically uh, host being. Okay, then uh, which firewall does filtering based on user device, roles, and profile? Okay, so that one is going to now look at, uh, at the context, our filtering services. Okay, 
because you can look at the context, the content in what you are looking at. Then, what kind of firewall is based on source and destination uh, data ports and connection? So, you see, when we talk about data port source and destination port addresses, we are looking at what the transport layer. Okay. Then, what kind of firewall is placed in front of a web server? In fact, that alone tells us uh, is what it is reverse uh, proxy. Then. What kind of um, firewall uh, does filtering based on the application or program or uh, service? That one is the application layer. And then, of course, the last one is firewall that does filtering based on uh, source and destination IP address. So let's check our answer. Wow. So we are correct. So I know that some of you will like, but don't like. Just put in the correct uh, score that you have. If it is zero, fine, put zero. If it is eight over eight, beautiful. Just put it down. We will get to other activities. Now, this is another one called port scanning. It's a security measure that uh, sometimes hackers use in order to identify the vulnerability of a network, all right, or vulnerability of a system. Now, when you say port scanning, remember we said that uh, the transport layer actually manages the ports that we use to connect to the internet. So if I go to the internet uh, or I go to, I want to access anything on the network, there is a port. The port is like the window, the window that is open. So in your houses, if you want to sleep, I'm sure you close all your windows and your doors. So the thief in this case, he comes to the house, he wants to see which window is open or which door is left open, then he will enter. And that is what this port scanning is all about. So it's actually a process of um, probing computer servers uh, or other network hosts in order to find whether they have open ports or, or, or not. So if it finds out, if, you, if they run it and they know that you have an open port or open window, then they use that to gain access into that particular uh, system. And there is a tool that they usually use to scan for that. And that tool is called the end Okay, the end map. So for the purposes of evaluating your own computer or organization's networks, firewall, and port security, you can use this port scanning tool to find open ports and vulnerability. So in your own network, uh, for those of you who work in organizations, uh, you know the IP addresses of your servers or the IP addresses of your routers. Um, you can use this tool. Just type the IP addresses and find out whether the ports are open or they are closed. We are going to do that as a, just a short practical. We'll do that soon and then we will see how it goes. So to execute the NMAT pop scanner of a computer on your local you need to download the program, all right? Download it and install it. So I have downloaded it, I've installed it, uh, but you also have um, the online version. If you don't want to download it, you also have the online version, which you can also use. So we are going to use both of them today, and then we are going to see what we have. <clears throat> so the Nmap scan uh, will report any service that is running, whether web services or mail services or whatever kind of service that is running. So it will report it. Uh, so we're going to find that whether it's open and accepted or whether it's closed or denied, not listening or filtered. Now, what do they mean? If the port scan tells you it's open or is accepted, it simply means that the host replied indicating the service is listening on that port. Okay. That means the service that is running on that machine or server is listening on that port. But if it returns the value closed, or maybe it tells you denied, or maybe it says not listening, what it simply means is that that particular host replied indicating that connections will be denied on that particular port. So if you are a hacker and you want to gain access to that particular network, if you see uh, it says close, deny, or not listening. It means you can't enter that house that port. 
Now, the other one that says filtered, blocked, or blocked, it simply means um, there was no reply to the host. It cannot even reach the host at all, at all, at all, at all. Okay? So, uh, to execute the port, uh, to execute it, it says to run the port scan <clears throat> for six common ports against your home router or your firewall, you just go to the Nmap uh, website. All right? And this is the tool here. This is, if you go to that link, this is the tool here. You will just type the IP address of your, your router here. Once you type the IP address or you type the service, then it will scan and then we will see the result. So for instance, now, uh, let me find out that of Google. Google is very common, for instance. Um, Google, the IP address of uh, Google will give us 216.58.223.238. So, uh, okay, you might want to find out how I know that. Let me just show you briefly. Okay, this is, um, I don't know whether you can see this black screen. I just type ping google.com. Now, ping is a tool that we use to test end-to-end -end connectivity between devices. So if I press enter, now it's giving me a response that I'm having a reply from Google. And this is the time it's taking uh, the reply to, to reach me, okay? So in this case, this is the IP address of Google that I'm seeing, uh, 216.58.223.238. Now you see, if Google plays the, a reverse proxy, then it means that we are just hitting the proxy. We are not hitting the main Google server, okay? We are not hitting the main problem server. If they place a reverse proxy, we will just be hitting this particular proxy. So let, let's test and see 216.58. 216.228.223.238.223.238. Yes, right. 223.238. So let's scan it and see. So it's going to scan if any of these services here is running on this proxy, we are going to see it. And if it is running, it will tell us whether the port is open, this point here, whether it is open or accepted, or whether it is closed or denied or not listening, or whether it is filtered or whether it is blocked. Okay, so I will just scan this and let's wait and see what, very good. So this is what it has, is telling us. It says, um, starting Nmap, this is it, so it's starting the particular scan so it will tell me the, the port it will tell me the state and then it will tell me the service that is running okay so it's telling me that under port 521 uh with this particular tcp protocol uh the google is running this service ftp but it's filtered it means that they have a firewall and they filtered who to access or who not to access then under port 22, the same thing, they are running this particular service called SSH. It's a particular service. And whether it's filtered or not, look at it, it's filtered. All right? They have a firewall there. And then they have port 80 here. And this TCP here. And they are saying that it's open. And what service are they running? They are running HTTP. What it means is that if I now type the google.com, I am going to reach that particular device. And the same thing on the HTTPS, on this uh, port, sorry, uh, 443, they are running this and it's open, open for HTTPS, okay? So this is, you can type that for, for any other IP address uh, that we have. Now, let's, let's try a particular IP address that we're giving here. Let's try it. Um, okay, these ones are those ports that are either open or not. So let me launch my own, maybe let me try the, my own home router and let's see uh, what happens there. So let me see, let me show you, where is the application? All right, so this is the application. Uh, I want to believe you can all see it. So let me type the local IP address of my own router, 192.168.13.1. 
So if I am scanning, so I will just come here and I will say scan. And uh, let's wait and see. All right. Once you finish scanning, we can also check. This is the application that I've installed on my system. We can also check the one for Google. We can check the one for, okay, let's even check the one for Cisco. All right. So while it's still scanning, why is this scanning? Let us find out what is the IP address uh, that Cisco will give us. So if I say Cisco or internetattack.com. Okay, so this is the IP address 54.191.191.127. This is the address that came out uh, for us. Let me type uh, Cisco.com. All right, okay, so this is more like it. So we're going to use this one for Cisco. This is the IP address uh, 72.163.4.185. All right, 72.163.4.185. Okay, so uh, mine is still scanning, the scan is not complete. So while it's still scanning, Let's go to the online version and scan for Cisco. All right. This is so I put the IP address for Cisco here and let us scan and see what uh, we've got. Okay. So looks like we have uh, virtually just the same thing that is running for the DNS for the Cisco, the one that we can say. So basically, this is this is how. So if you want to hack into somebody's network, um, what they do is that they try to get the IP address of your 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 service, and then they run the scan. And once they run the scan, and then uh, they check it. All right. So they, they, they will see it. So let me say. Um, um, let me check this one. Okay, this is hosted on the internet. So let's copy this particular IP address and see what whether they have also secured it. It should be secured because it's in the cloud. Okay, so you see in their own case, it's not that it's filtered, it's closed. Okay, the same type of services, they are all closed. So let me come back to this my application. It's still running. Okay, it's still running. And then let's see the information. These are the information we've gotten. And in this particular application that I have run, let me show you the information you can gather from it. You see, the first thing, it will tell you the IP address of which we have gotten. Then uh, it will tell you the name of the device. So you see, I'm using a mobile router. And this is the name of the, the device. It will tell you the ports that are that are there. Can you see? These are the ports that I have that are running. Uh, you have port 53, which is running my DNS. You have port 80, which is running my HTTP. You have uh, port 443, which is um, HTTPS, and uh, uh, port 777 to run the particular application I'm running. Okay, and then. Um, what other information will it uh, give us? There's so much information here, but maybe when we go on the advanced stage, you are going to I'm going to explain deeper. So for now, look at what it is. It's telling me the port, the state of the port, the service, and then even the version. All right, the service and even the version. And look at this is what I have running on my own home uh, router, and then. These are all the information. So if I now make attempts to log into my router now, you're going to see the details here. All right. So it's going to give me all this. You see, see, these are all information about the router, my home router, uh, just by scanning the port. All right. So I'm not going to go into details of telling you how to decode or do some other things it's for the advanced class. But what you need to know, and this one hop is just trying to tell me is just one router from my system here. Okay, so what it's just telling me is um is that uh, you can use this particular tool to know the ports that are running on a particular system, uh, system uh, the protocol that is running, 
the status, whether it's open or filtered or closed or whatever, the status and if possible, even the topology is going to bring out the topology for you. So you see, this particular tool is very, very important whenever you come to network security. So <clears throat> let's do the next activity. The next activity is going to be from 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay? From number 9 to 15. So, um, these are the, 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 the actions. Drop, not listening, closed, open, filtered, denied, or accepted. So, <clears throat> I'm going to read out the characteristics. Then you tell me, you will now put in your answer which one. Okay, so which item will be dropped? Which one described drop? A host replied indicating a service is listening on the port. Will that be dropped? Or a host replied indicating that connections will be denied to the port. Or which one? How did host did not reply? These are the three options. So you, which one are you going to pick? You pick uh whichever of this and then you assign to number number nine okay then the next one which one describes not listening is it post replied indicating a service is listening on the port or is it host replied indicating that connections will be denied to the port or host did not reply for all of them, these are the options. <clears throat> these are the options. It's the same options, uh, but they're describing those actions that I have just um, shown you. Then, uh, the next one, which one is going to describe closed? Is the host replied indicating service is listening to the port? Host replied indicating that connections will be denied or host did not reply. So let's make it just simple. The first one is A, the second one is B, the third one is C. So you can either put A, B, or C. So you see it's the same order, A, B, or C. Okay? A, B, or C. Uh, A, B, or C. A, B, or C. So, um, so let's see this one. Which one is open? A, B, or C. A says, post replied indicating a service is listening on the port. B says, host replied indicating that connections will be denied to the port. C says, host did not reply. So you put your answer. Then filtered, what does it say? Host replied indicating a service is listening to the port. B, host replied indicating that connections will be denied to the port. And C, host did not reply. All right, then deny, what does it say? A, host replied indicating a service is not listening. B. Post uh, replied indicating connections will be denied and C. Post did not reply. Then the last one, uh, you can use the same A, B, or C. Okay? So let's see our answers. Uh, the first one, drop. Drop. When is a packet dropped? The answer is post did not reply, which is C. Okay? Then the second one, when do we say a traffic, uh, the, port is, the port is not listening? All right. So, uh, is when a host replied indicating that connections will be denied. So, the answer is B. So, when do we say a port is closed? Okay. When do we say a port is closed? It's also the same uh, B. Host replied indicating connections will be denied. Then when do we say a port is open? Uh, it's open when a host replied indicating the service is listening. All right. So when do you say a port is filtered? All right. When do you say a port is filtered? When the host did not reply. Okay. So when do you say a uh, host is denied? All right. Is denied. When a host replied indicating that the connection will be denied, and then when is the host accepted? All right, the answer is A. It says when the host is what listening. 
All right, so I just hope we are correct. Let's check and see. All right, so we are correct. So you mark yourself and uh, uh, let's see what you have gotten. Just turn it down. So we have done uh, from 1 to 15 now. We still have some more to go. Now let's look at security appliances. Security appliances basically are the devices that you will use within your network in order to, to, to protect the network from security threats. So one of it is called a router. All right. One of it is called a router. Uh, a router has many functions or capabilities, but primarily a router does what we call path determination and packet forwarding. That means it determines the best path in order to forward your traffic. Okay. Additionally, uh, 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 routers does uh, traffic filtering. Also, they have ability to do traffic filtering. They have ability to do intru intrusion prevention system. They can also do encryption. They can also do VPN, virtual private network, for secure tunneling. So routers can all do this particular uh, services. So a router is a device, it's a physical security appliance that you can also use. How about a firewall? A firewall is also a device, all right? And uh, what does it do? It does network management and analytics, all right? It, it can provide firewall capabilities, all right? Firewall capabilities as um, we can see here, this is a firewall. Here, this is a router, how it looks. This is how the firewall uh, looks like. So it can provide these particular capabilities. <clears throat> then how about IPS, all right? Um, intru intrusion prevention uh, system. Uh, this is how it looks. This is also how it looks. You see, they are all devices. And they all look similar. They all look similar, all right? So uh, it's also used to prevent intrusion from getting into your system. And then how about uh, VPN? VPN uh, is a device that, that helps you to connect your site. Maybe your office has another branch in another location. And you want that remote office to be having access to all the resources that the head office is having. So you can use VPN devices to help achieve uh, this. Okay. Uh, what are the prevention um, security uh, tools? We have the malware or antiviruses that we have talked about. We have devices that uh, actually has firewall intrusion prevent, uh, prevention devices or web and email security appliances so all these they do this particular services all right especially the firewall they do all this and then you have the other security device so the point we're saying here in your network one of the things you can do to secure your network is to get a security appliance all right to get a particular security appliance all right so let us see which appliances we are going to do. That's the next activity. Uh, that's from 15 to 20, now 16 to 20. All right. So we are going to now see the appliances that we need. All right. So we, these are the answers here. So you decide which one goes here. So which device is dedicated for intrusion uh, uh, prevention? intrusion prevention is it a vpn a, a virtual private network is it firewall is it ips intrusion prevention system is it amp is it router which one okay number two the next one is which device comes in the next generation device and can be installed as a software in host competitors okay so you give that any of these options here then the third one, which device is designed to secure and encrypt tunneling? Tunneling has to do when you have a remote uh, site, um, uh, office in another location, and you want them to access the local content here. So you give us, among these ones, you give us the answer. 
The next one, how many capabilities besides just routing function, uh, including traffic, filtering, encryption, and capabilities for secure encrypted tunneling? Which device can do all this, right? We put the name of the device. And finally, um, what device has uh, has the all the capabilities of the ISR as well as advanced network management and analysis? So, which one can do that? So, I'm sure you have written your answers now. All right, written your answers now. So, let's give it a try now. So, which device does intrusion prevention? In fact, from the name, you know that is what? Intrusion prevention system. The next one, which device comes in the next generation and basically does, in fact, this is the area that you should be installed and you should be concerned, can be installed as software for computers. This is it, right? EMP. Then the next one, um, which one is designed to secure tunneling? Once you see secure and ticket tunneling, just know that is a uh, VPN, right? Then which one has this compatibility uh, functions? The router definitely. It can do traffic shaping, filtering, encryption capabilities, secure and tunneling as well. The router can do all this. And then the last one, but not the least, is the firewall. And basically, it does what? Network management and analytics. All right. So let's check our answers. All right. We are all correct. So you score and grade yourself. Now, let's see how you can detect attacks in real time. Right. How you can detect attacks in real time. Now, in the previous class, we talked about DDoS, distributed denial of service. And uh, we pointed out that one of the main function, one of how the DDS works is that it wants to attack a particular server. So what it does is that uh, it uses multiple other devices globally and tells them to push in a particular traffic to a particular server. So like you see in this image here, this is the victim, the device that is going to be attacked. This is the attacker, all right? So this attacker, instead of this attacker to come straight to, to attack this guy, what it does is that it's going to now talk to, talk to this one, two, three, four uh, devices. They are usually called handlers, all right? They are also systems. They are also servers. It will talk to them and, and it will install a script in each one of them such that they can actually go ahead to generate flooding requests. So you see, they will generate using these devices and they will all flood this particular. So this is like distributed um, this thing. So um, we say software is not perfect. When an atta attacker exploits a few in a piece of software before the, cross the creator uh, can fix it, it is known as the zero-day attack. Sorry about that. We said that software is not perfect. When the attacker exploits a few pieces of software before the creator can fix it, um, it is called the uh, unknown the zero day attack. Due to sophistication and enormity of the zero-day attack found today, it is becoming common that network attacks will succeed and that a successful defense is now measured in how quickly a network can respond to that attack. So the ability to detect this particular attack as they are happening in real time as well as stopping it immediately within minutes of occurring uh, is the ideal uh, goal of this. So unfortunately, many companies and organizations are unable to detect this attack, all right, 
for weeks and days and even months. So how do you go about it? One, it's called a real-time scanning from edge to edge point. Real-time scanning from edge to edge point. So detecting, detecting attacks in real time requires activity scanning for attacks using firewall and IDS. IDS is intrusion detection system. IPS is intrusion prevention system. Okay? So we are saying that you can use a particular firewall device in order to be able to run this real-time scanning from end to end point. Once you discover that you have uh, a breach, then quickly you can act immediately. All right? Then the next one is DDoS attacks real-time response. All right? So the DDoS is one of the biggest attack threats running real-time response and detection. So DDoS attacks are extremely difficult to defend against. Because the attacks originate from hundreds of thousands of zombies and the attacker appears as legitimate traffic, as shown, uh, we have seen. So it's usually very difficult, but if you use the real time response, uh, it will be able to help you. Now, how about the AMP? All right. Um, uh, it gives certain benefits. It's also helps to get information accurately, it gives you the incidents and time response, it gives you information about the traffic as they come. But how do you provide events against uh, the constant pressure of zero-day attacks? Remember, the zero-day attacks takes advantage of the fact that we do not update our applications or we do not update the uh the, the the operating systems that we have or when we're using pirated software that's where it most commonly so as well as advanced um persistent threats that steal data over long period of time one solution is to use an enterprise level advanced malware an enterprise level advanced malware solution that offers real time and prevention for instance, I am having Norton Internet Security on my system, but that is just for local system. All right. So the end is saying that okay, you can go for Sophos Network Security Solution, you can go for Bit Defender, you can go for Norton, you can go for any other ones that you want to go, but the enterprise version. So that way, the network administrator must constantly monitor the network for signs of malware and behavior that reveal in that particular uh, device. All right. So Cisco has the advanced malware protection um, uh, thread grid. All right, and analyzes millions of files uh, and correlates them against the hundreds of millions of other analyzed malware um, uh, antics, all right? So the, the, the advanced malware protection um, system is just to say uh, you are relying on the data collected by, by, by the software you are using. For instance, if I'm using Norton, Norton has um, a virus definition database that they update every now and then. So if I'm using an enterprise um, Norton, what I'm using basically then is advanced malware protection. So if any of my system in the network is suspected to have a file that is infected, it is corresponded with millions and hundreds of millions of the information in the virus definition database of Norton. Now, Cisco also have their own AMP, all right? Uh, Kaspersky have their own. Sophos is another very good platform. They also have their own. And, um, and so on and so forth. So all these agencies or all these organizations have their advanced malware protection uh, grid. And the whole idea is because they keep populating the virus definition database that will help uh, pr uh, protect them. All right. So what are some of the best practices that we need to... So many national and professional organizations 
have published lists of security threat practices. All right. One is we perform what we call risk assessment. And risk assessment is just trying to know the value of what you are protecting, how it will help you uh, in your organization. So knowing the value of what you are protecting will help you justify the security expenditure. So if in your organization you are having a network and you have never performed risk assessment, then um, you might not value the amount of money when you spend in security. The second best practice that you should do is create a security policy. Every organization should have a policy, some rules, some guidelines that will actually um, cover uh, the, the, the job duties and expectations of staff or, or technicians or whoever that comes to use your network. If you do not have security policies like this, um, then you are not following best practices and so you can be vulnerable at any time. The next best practice is physical security measure. So you can restrict access to networking, uh, closets, uh, TC box, network racks, server rooms, you know, data centers. You can make them out of bounds. It is not everybody that should gain access to your server room or your data center or your network rack. Or nobody, it's not everybody, only the authorized person. So that's the best practice. Another you can do is human resource uh, security measures. So employees should be properly re uh, researched with background checks. All right. So that uh, if they have a um, history of malicious um, activities, then you know where to place them. So you need to also perform and test your backup. So regular backups is very, 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 very important. So any organization that does not carry out regular backup, when he or she is attacked, it will be devastating, right? Then employee access control. So you need to configure user roles and privileges, all right? Everybody should not have the same rights to, to uh, uh, online rights to certain resources. So you need to control that. You need to also do regularly test incidents uh, 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 response. So if you do that, we are going to help you. The next one is implement a network monitoring and analytics and measurement tool. So you need to select a particular tool that will measure the kind of traffic that users use on your network which ones take more of the data as against others. And then that will help you know how to manage your network very effectively. Then you need to also look at how to implement network security devices on your network. You need to have firewalls on your network. You need to have routers on your network. That will reduce the, the impact or will secure your network. All right? You need to also implement... Um, a comprehensive endpoint security solution. What it means by endpoint, you need to have like an antivirus that scans even to the last device that is going to be communicating to your, your network. Then, you very importantly, you need to educate the users or employees in your organization about network security. So if your organization do not value the aspect of network security, um, you can contact us. We can do an orientation on cyber security or network security on how they can go about it. But if you can do it on your own, that would be great. Then, uh, if you want to, the next one, the last one is you need to learn how to encrypt sensitive data within your organization. So if you do that, then you will be safe. Now, the next point that I want us to look at is called the botnet. I want to believe that you can remember the botnet that we talked about uh, some time back. We said a botnet is a group of bots connected through the internet with the ability to be controlled by a malicious individual or group. So a bot computer is typically infected by visiting a website that is malicious. And opening or opening an email that has an attachment that is infected or malicious. 
So a botnet can have tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of bots, but these bots can be activated to distribute malwares and launch GDOS all over your network. Sometimes even brute force, you know, they can do all that. So um, in this particular figure that you see here, it actually shows um, how botnet uh, uh, traffic filters used to inform the worldwide security community about uh, botnet's location. So look at it here. So step one says, infected clients try to communicate with a command and control host on the internet, which is this guy here, all right? And these are the infected clients. These people probably visited a website they were not supposed to visit or downloaded an email that has an infected uh, attachment or something like that, okay? And so by this, step two says, Cisco uh, SI, uh, or updates and uh, updates the Cisco ASA. These are security firewall devices. All right. So if this try to are infected and they try to go be into your network to spread, they are prevented by this particular um, device. And once they are prevented, what happens? This device goes ahead and alerts and alert the security team of the prevention, mitigation, and uh, recommendation. Because they have been making attempt to hack this network, this will send message to your team and will tell them that, look, attempts have been made on your system. This is what you should do. And it's also going to be sent to the Cisco um, security team worldwide too. Then let's look at what they call the cyber kill chain. All right, cyber kill chain. Uh, we have basically three subgroups. We have the post compromise, we have the compromise, and then you have the pre compromise. The pre compromise is before your system was compromised. Then the compromise is uh, what happens during the system is infected, and post compromise, what happens after your system is infected. So we're saying that uh, there are certain steps you need to take. All right. Uh, the first one here before you get compromised is recognizance. All right. So the attacker will gather information about your, your about the target. That is recognizance. The next one here is weaponization. All right. The attacker creates an exploit malicious payload to send uh, to the target. All right. The third one is delivery. So the attacker sends the exploits and malicious payload to the target by email or other method. That is pre-compromise, before your system is being compromised. That is what the attacker does. But what does it do during the infection stage? All right, it does exploitation. And exploitation is actually to take advantage of the vulnerability of your system. And what will it do after that? It will install the botnet, or it will install the malware, or it will install whatever it is that it wants to install. Then after it has done that, then what happens? It takes command or control of your system or of your network. It can shut down your system. It can shut down your network. It can crash your hard drive. It can lock your files. It can do anything it can do about that. And then finally, stage seven is action. The attacker performs malicious actions like information, threads, or executes additional attacks or other devices. It's very, very important. And here we said we have the recognizance, the weaponization, the delivery, exploitation, installation, command and control, and then action. So we'll do a small activity and see how you can remember. All right. So you are going to put from stage stage one to seven. You're going to put it here. All right. We have done one to fifteen, right? So now you are going to do now from uh, 16, 16, uh, 16, 17, 18, 
22. Yes, so, uh, 22. All right, so, so delivery is, which one is stage one? Which one is stage one? So I think stage one is, you write stage one. Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Which one is stage one? You write, okay, so let's put it this way. Delivery is stage one. Delivery is stage three. Very good. Then action. Action is stage one. And what is the last stage? Action is stage seven. Command and control is stage six. Yes, command and control before stage seven. Then uh, stage one should be recognizance. Stage one should be this. Then installation. Installation should be before stage six, so it should be stage five. Then exploitation should be stage four. And then finally, we have stage two. Oh, okay, stage two. Let's check. All right, so we are good. Sorry, I didn't allow you to do it yourself. Time is running out. Uh, we should be done in the next uh, two, three minutes. Our time is exhausted, so let's just rush it up. So behavioral-based security, okay? Now, behavior-based security is actually a form of threat detection that does not rely on known malicious signature, but instead uses information context to detect anomalies in the network. So behavior-based detection involves capturing and analyzing the flow of com communications between a user on a local network and a local or remote destination. So these communications, when captured and analyzed, reveal context and patterns of behavior which can be used to detect anomaly. So behavior-based detection can discover the presence of an attack by a change from normal behavior. All right? So we have the two we are going to look at, the Honey ports and then the cyber threat defense uh, architecture. So those are the two, but this is the way that they move. So the Honey port is a behavior based detection tool that actually first lures the attacker yeah, in by appearing to uh, appearing to the attackers. Uh, uh, a predicted pattern of malicious behavior, meaning that it's just like a way to to lure, to bait the hat hacker. You open a particular port, the attacker will think that uh, your port, your network is secure. All right, so it's like opening a port and then leaving some things open, but the attacker does not know what you have left behind for it. So it's just a way of luring or capturing the attacker so that you can. Um, gain more knowledge on the attack that the attacker is trying to do, thereby building your own defense. And that is the concept of the honeypot. Okay? And it's gotten its name from the way uh, bees uh, set their own uh, pots. Then the next one is the cyber threat defense solution. Um, it's basically an architecture, architecture that uses uh, behavioral based detection and indicator. All right, basically to provide greater visibility, context, and control. And um, uh, the goal is to know who who is who and who does what, uh, where, and stuff like that. And uh, if you gather such intelligence, it will help you in your security. Then another thing you can do to protect your system is the net flow. The net flow. The net flow is just to determine the flow of your traffic. This is software that can help you determine the flow of your traffic. Uh, like here, you can inspect all this information. You can inspect uh, the source IP address, destination address, source port destination. You can inspect all this information once it's enabled on your router. So once you enable your router, um, it's going to inspect all the traffic that is flowing through your network and it's going to protect you. Then the next one you can protect yourself is the CS, CSIRT. All right. 
and um, basically it's used by large organization all right and um uh, the Cisco CRT collaborates with Forum of Incident Report and Security Team and the National Safety Information Exchange. All right. So all these things are, are measures that you can take in order to prevent your system. Um, I'm sorry. I think we would have to end it here. Uh, I've just been informed our time is up. We'll have to uh, end here, but in the meantime, I think uh, we just have um, just a few left, IDS and IPS, then this last activity, and then chapter four is done. So uh, I would encourage you to read it on your own. Um, you can ask your questions in the WhatsApp forum that we have, uh, and then uh, we will see how we can uh, respond to you uh, over there. Once again, thank you so much for your time and for your participation in, in today's class. Thank you very much. Sorry, we have to end this quickly. Have a lovely day.